Welcome to Wisconsin in Focus. I'm J.D. Davidson. While the focus of the country this week has been in Milwaukee, on Republicans, and on the November general election, people in Wisconsin will actually head to the polls in August for primaries. However, two proposed constitutional amendments will also be on that ballot, and some think those could play a critical role in the state's future, despite not getting much attention leading up to Election Day. Joining us is Ben Yount, Wisconsin contributor for the Center Square. Ben, we've talked about these amendments before, but explain them again for our listeners and tell us who thinks they could be really important. Yeah, this is the barn burning issue of the appropriations process for federal pass through dollars, which if that doesn't get you running out to the pool, I'm fired up on, on a hot <laughs> August day. Nothing will. I, it's, it, it is an easy joke, but it really is a, a, a serious issue. There, there are two constitutional amendments that Republicans are pushing, and, and that's a key part of the story that would limit the governor's power to spend federal money unilaterally. And the Wisconsin Policy Forum wrote a pretty good report. Again, their their research is, is always solid. And it took a look at why this is. All states get money from the federal government. And it generally goes to one of three big areas. M- Medicaid, which is the joint state and federal health care program. It's for single moms and sick grandmas and people with profound disabilities. And in some states, not Wisconsin, but in some states, it is the Obamacare expansion for single, able-bodied, childless adult men. And in many states, Medicaid has become a catch-all for people who are in this country illegally. It wasn't designed for that, and you'll get a state-level debate on that, but that's who's on it. So Medicaid's the biggest recipient of federal dollars. Then you get schools. Federal government passes a lot of money down to public schools, including Title I money, which is for low-income kids. And you get roads. All those gas taxes that we pay, they come back to us from Washington, D.C. And for years and years and years and years and years, that money has really just been plowed into the budget and spent where it's supposed to be. Sometimes you'll have a rogue governor who wants to borrow a little bit from here to do a little bit of this. But in general, there's very little controversy about the actual spending of those dollars. You got to remember that during the coronavirus, the federal government simply threw money out the door to the states and some of it went to masks and some of it went to the National Guard because they were doing things that that we wrote a story back during the height of coronavirus that about a third, somewhere between a third and a half of all of the federal money that Wisconsin got was plowed into state government, buying tests, ramping things up at the Department of Health Services, helping administrative branches do administrative branch things. But there was this four and a half billion dollars that came in under relief. And that money was essentially just for Governor Tony Evers to dole out as he saw fit. At the time, Republicans said, hey, look, We can use this money to plug some holes. We can use this money smartly. We can let's not start brand new programs. Let's not go out and hire a bunch of people on this, because when you hire somebody, when you're flush and then you get lean again, you got to go and you got to fire this person. Governor Evers, as was his management style then, said, no, I've got this. I don't need your input. Thank you very much. He vetoed every legislative attempt to let lawmakers say how that money would be spent. So because they were stymied by the governor, Republicans at the Capitol are going to the voters. And the questions are flowery, but essentially it says, should the legislature have some say in how this money is spent? And the policy forum report takes a look at it and says, under the right circumstances, it's not going to be really any different than how the budget works right now. Remember, the power of the purse is with the people's house. So in Wisconsin, the state assembly is the one that drives the bus on the budget. And lawmakers get a say in how every single state dollar is spent. So giving them say over how this money would be spent is, is not not out of the, the realm of possibility. But the policy form did say, look, depending on how this law is written, once it passes as a constitutional amendment and then becomes a law, how the specifics of it are written could have wide ranging impact. It could gum up the works. It could turn what used to be regular sort of fiduciary decisions into partisan battles. It remains to be seen. And this is one of these things that you really have to go and search 
to find the stories. We're one of the few who wrote about this. We get texts or emails at the radio station all the time. saying, What's going on with these constitutional amendments? And so as we get closer to August, the policy forum reports or the policy forum report pointed out that more people need to know what they're voting on, because right now an awful lot of people don't know. Yeah, and and that's not surprising. Usually the most important types of amendments or ballot questions, not the most important, but but the things that really could make an impact on the day to day lives of people are the ones that aren't as flamboyant as other ones. But I think there's two things that are interesting here. One, we're not talking about the traditional federal dollars that come. The, these are kind of different types of things. And there, generally, there's not a lot of that money. And it, it, we're not going to see COVID every two or three years with billions of dollars coming to a state. No, you're, you're exactly right. That this is a once in a lifetime sort of thing. Once in an every couple of generations sort of thing. But this gets to... What's really been an ongoing battle here in Wisconsin, and we can talk all about our election laws in this, is nobody ever thought to make a law that said this is how it works because no one ever thought, well, we'll need a law to say how this works. No one ever thought that the federal government was going to hand the governor in an election year a $4 billion blank check to just go ahead, spend it however you want. And and some of our, our coronavirus money went to coronavirus testing. Some of it went for upgrades at the Department of Workforce Development, which if you remember back to April of 20, when everybody lost their job and no one could file a claim, they needed it. But some of this money went to every single community theater project across the state. Oh, you got five people coming together to do Midsummer's Night Dream. Here's $10,000. Every minor league baseball team in the entire state got some money. And, and I'm not talking about the AAA affiliate of the Brewers. I'm, I'm talking about the, the, the Eau Claire Express, which is one of these frontier league teams, a bunch of high school. That kids you and I can play for. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these, it, you know, Hey, tickets are $3. Hot dogs are two beers are five. We'll see you tonight. And, and that was where you had these objections of, of look, this is clearly not coronavirus related. This has clearly just become a way for the governor to go around the state in 2002 when it was an election year and and hand out big checks. And and, you know, the Democrats here in Wisconsin have the courts. That's their backstop. They can't get any of their priorities through the Republican controlled legislature. The Republican controlled legislature has a really hard time getting any of their priorities through the Democratic governor. Well, when the Democrats run into a roadblock, they go, they use an end around and go to the new liberal majority Supreme Court. When Republicans hit a roadblock, they use an end around and go directly to the voters. And so until there's some some sense of, of cooperation or shared governance, this is what we're going to see. I don't think this will be the last ballot question. The problem is, is that it takes two years to get a ballot question on. This was a big deal in 2022. And now here we are in 2024. But that's sort of how we got here. Well, we'll see as we lead up to the election. We'll be following this. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. 